It's about 6 p.m. right now. And I'm cleaning up the patio. I've been doing some weeding, pulling up some weeds. And I went to throw a bucket of weeds in the trash. I have a separate trash can for yard waste. And I saw there was a cat underneath the car. And that's the cat. So that's the, uh, the tabby cat with the fluffy tail. That's the one that I've seen in the yard recently. And um, yeah, just walked into the neighbor's yard right now. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Here's Stella. She's laying on the bed, on her favorite spot of the bed. So Stella's going to get her Mother's Day present later today. It's currently out in the greenhouse because I wanted to surprise her with it. Stella says she's a very lucky cat and every day is Mother's Day for her because she gets to spend her life with her two sons. Right, Stella? Stella says she's a very lucky cat and every day is Mother's Day for her because she is so lucky to not be separated from her two sons. They've gotten to stay together as a family, right, Stella? And her baby daddy also. Stella gets to stay with her entire family, baby daddy and kitties. Let's see if Splash is in the penthouse. Hey, Splash, how you doing? I'm here with Stella's Mother's Day present. This is a fresh catnip plant. And here's Simba. And there's Boo. And here's Stella. And they're all trying to get at the plant. But it's for Stella. Stella, this is your Mother's Day present, Stella. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, Stella. Happy Mother's Day, Stella. Usually Stella does not like to share her catnip plant, but it looks like she might be sharing it this year. She's only going to get it for a little while today. Then I'll take it away and she'll get it tomorrow also. So I did not rub any of the leaves. Sometimes if you rub the leaves, then um, they have more of an aroma and the cats are more attracted to them. Wow, this is not like Stella to just abandon her catnip plant. I guess she's in the mood to share it today. She probably figures it's a big plant and there's plenty to go around. Boo! 
Boo just hissed. Boo! Boo! Simba's not happy about that. There you go, Stella. That's your plant anyway. Okay, you enjoy it. Happy Mother's Day. I rubbed a bunch of the leaves. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take Stella and the plant into another room and then I think she'll enjoy it by herself uh, without Boo. Because I think she's kind of, you know, being very cautious because she doesn't want to get smacked by Boo. You know, Boo thinks he's the alpha. I gave Stella the catnip on the bed, so now she has it all to herself. And I shut the door. Okay, Stella, now you can enjoy your catnip. And you don't have to worry about the boys, okay? Don't worry about the boys. Stella said I could share a piece with each of the boys, so I have a few leaves here. Here's a leaf for you, Boo. There's one for you, Simba. Boo already ate his. Simba ate his. And here's Splash. Here's Splash. Eat a Splash. I'm holding Boo back. I'm holding Boo back. Eat a Splashy. And Simba's here too. Eat a Splash. Eat a splash. I shut the door so Splash could have some time with his catnip leaf without Boo attacking him for it. It's about 11.30 a.m. right now, and here's Boo. He's in his office taking a nap, and he is going to be assigned his typical job. And I am just about to leave to visit Grandma and Grandpa for Mother's Day. Boo says, Happy Mother's Day, Grandma. And all of the cats have a job while I'm away. And Boo's job is to look out the windows and make sure nobody strange is in the yard. Right, Boo? No strange people, no strange animals. And if you notice anything, you are to alert me telepathically. Right, Boo? Boo says, yeah, he's really good at that. See, he's stretching. He's getting ready for a full work day. Okay, Boo? Yeah. Okay, Bo. And here's Stella. Stella's been taking a nap on the bed. Stella got some extra time with me this morning for Mother's Day. Right, Stella? Stella got a squeeze up. She got a massage. She got some play time. Now she's taking a nap. And Stella already knows what her job is because we already discussed it. Stella's job is to make sure that everyone gets along while I'm away. Right, Stella? She makes sure there's peace in the house. Peace and happiness. Right, Stella? Peace, love, and happiness. She says that's a tough job, so she's getting plenty of rest so she can do it well. And here's Simba. And Simba threw up this morning. I just finished cleaning up his vomit. So um, I give the cats their breakfast, and they had one of the primal raw chicken and salmon nuggets. They also had a little bit of homemade raw food and they had uh, like a tiny bit of some canned food because Boo likes to get canned food and I had a little bit extra in the can so I gave everyone like maybe a teaspoonful of it. Well, one thing I noticed was that Simba really enjoyed breakfast today so much that he went around to everyone else's plate 
and tried to eat whatever they did not want. And then afterward, he drank water. And then after that, what he did was he walked into the room downstairs where I have the litter boxes. And I also have a camera pointed at the litter boxes because with four cats, if you want to know who's doing what, sometimes you have to have cameras. And I watched the camera footage so I know what happened. He walked in there. He was going to use a litter box, but then he started like making weird noises with his mouth, almost like a dry mouth noise kind of thing. And then he was making not really coughing noises, almost like huffing noises. And then he puked. And it was a lot of vomit. And it was very watery vomit. And I did not notice it until I went downstairs to fill up the automatic feeders uh, with their dinner for tonight and their breakfast for tomorrow. I'm assuming I'm going to be staying over and coming back tomorrow. I could be wrong about that. Maybe I'll come back tonight. But for now, I'm hoping to get away for like 24 hours. So that's why I have their automatic feeder set up. And uh, I guess Simba had an upset stomach from eating too much. And I had to clean all of it up. And he puked on the green fake grass uh, little rug that I have outside of where the litter boxes are. So I had to take that outside and hose it down. And that's why I love those fake grass rugs. They are so good for catching litter. You know how cats track litter outside of a litter box? These rugs are so good for catching the litter. And then if someone has an accident on them, I could just take them outside and hose them down. And they're, they're really good that way. And once I saw that it was Simba, what I did was I found him upstairs on a cat tower. He looked like he was fine. He didn't have any weird symptoms. Like, you know, if he was really sick, he might be hiding somewhere or staying downstairs and uh, just acting differently. He wasn't acting any differently. So what I did was I gave him a squeeze up and he ate that squeeze up and he was very glad to have the squeeze up. He ate it right away. So after the cats vomit, what I sometimes do to see if they still have an appetite is I feed them like a squeeze up or a chew -roo. And if they eat it, then I know it's probably just like uh, they ate too fast or they ate too much or uh, something not very serious. If they refuse a squeeze up or a churu, then I know that I have to be more concerned and keep them under more observation. So thankfully Simba ate the squeeze up that I gave him and he seems to be fine. Like he's laying here on the bed with Stella and that's like his normal behavior. So um, I do have cameras set up all over the house and he will be on observation when I check in on the cameras. Simba's job is to make sure there are no bugs in the house. Right, Simba? Simba says right, and he says right now there are no bugs in the house, but I know better than that. I know there are bugs in the house, but I'm taking care of them instead of Simba because some bugs are a little bit too small for Simba to take care of. He likes to go for the medium and large bugs. Right, Simba? Okay. All right, Simba, but you're on duty now, okay? You're on bug patrol. Simba says he's always on bug patrol. And here's Splash. Splash is up in the penthouse. That's his favorite location this time of day. And Splash now has two jobs. His first job is to make sure he protects the furniture and that nobody destroys furniture while I'm away. Right, Splash? He does a very good job with that. And his second job is to make sure that there are no mice around. Right, Splash? So far, we have not seen any mice in the house. But if there ever was a mouse that got into the house, Splash is in charge of making sure that it is taken care of. Right, Splash? Okay, Splash, you're on duty. So I was supposed to leave two hours ago, but uh, one of the reasons why I'm late is because I had to clean up Simba's vomit. The other reason why is because of this automatic feeder. So this is Boo's automatic feeder. He likes it up here just because he always had it up here before Ditto came in the house. So I've returned it up here just because he tends to eat it better uh, up here than downstairs with the other three for the other cats. And what happened was when I went to put his dinner in here, I opened it up and there were ants and I had to take care of the ants in this room and I hope they're taken care of. And that's also why this feeder is raised off the ground right now. There's like three solar lights uh, underneath it and so far that's been keeping ants out of it. So here's what's going on inside of the feeder. What I do is I set these up the night before 
and I make sure they're programmed, I make sure they're moving correctly, and I'll put a little bit of crunchies in four of these compartments. And this was uh, this morning's compartment. So the cats get like a little crunchy snack, and then they get their regular breakfast afterward. And then the night before, I usually fill up uh, the last two meals. So this will be dinner tonight, and then this would be like breakfast tomorrow and dinner tomorrow, just in case I'm not back. Um, but if I'm back, they can eat out of here anyway. And for tomorrow's meals, all the cats get some freeze-dried raw, and they also get crunchies. And for dinner tonight, Boo's getting freeze-dried raw and crunchies. The other cats are getting frozen raw and crunchies. And by the time they eat their dinner, the frozen raw will be defrosted, so it works out really well. And it doesn't matter that it sits in this feeder like eight hours. That's fine. So what happened was when I opened this up today to fill it up with Boo's dinner... Uh, then I saw there were some ants crawling around, so I had to deal with that. Actually, right now there's an ant up here, and then there's an ant on the floor, so I'm going to have to get rid of those. But so far, um, it's been uh, much better than it was before. And I did find an ant trail, and I tracked it down to coming from uh, this area under the wall. Uh, I don't know if you could see that. I put some ant bait down. There's like a gazillion ants eating that ant bait. So what they'll do is they'll eat the ant bait, then they'll go back to their nest, and then it destroys all the ants. And uh, hopefully it'll work. So I put one there, and the reason why I'm putting these ant baits out is to distract uh, the ants from Boo's food. And this is the ant bait that I find works really well, and I've tried every single natural method you can try, and it does not stop these ants. I mean, in New Jersey, in this area, in this neighborhood, there are millions of ants. And I don't know where they exactly come into the house, but I've been battling them in four locations so far this year, uh, in the kitchen, the bathroom, uh, this room now and near my front door. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been it's been rough so far. And then yesterday we had just rain all day. So uh, the ants were more active. And there's another one here and you could see all the ants feeding on this one. Also, I try to put the bait in an area where the cats are really not going to be able to get to it because I don't want the cats, um, you know, disturbing it, eating it or, you know, bothering it in any way. So that's why I have it hidden in these areas where the cats are probably not going to touch it they might not even notice it so i'm going to put this here for boo and hope for the best that it stays clear of ants while i'm away and if ants do become a problem here he does have the three other automatic feeders downstairs that he could eat out of the cats usually don't eat their full meals in these feeders lately i come home and there's plenty of crunchies or freeze dried in it so boo has options it's about 12 15 right now and I'm going to be sitting in a lot of traffic. This is why I wanted to leave early so I could avoid traffic. Um, but there's a lot of traffic. I believe there's an accident on the George Washington Bridge. At least that's what Google is telling me. And I'm noticing the price of gas. So I put gas in this car a week ago. And I think I paid like $4.05 a gallon or $4.01 a gallon. And every gas station that I've passed so far is $4.39 a gallon. So it's gone up 30 cents in a week. That's crazy. I'm, I'm glad I got gas when I, when I got it last week, but these gas prices are not good. It's about 1 p.m. right now. I am still sitting in traffic, this time on the Cross Island Parkway, and I'm in Queens. So I've made it through the Bronx. And hopefully once I get off this road, then the traffic will lighten up a little bit. There's something about sitting in traffic that just, it just zaps all of your energy. It just makes me so tired. Hello, Marty. How you doing today? You hanging out over here? You hanging out over here on the bench? I got a little too close to her with the camera. Here's Marty. And Marty has one of the cat shelters that Ditto used. Isn't 
Isn't she a pretty girl? She's such a good girl. She likes to come inside and be with Grandpa. This is the shelter she uses when she comes outside. This is one of the shelters that Hydrox and Ditto used to use. And Grandpa restained it and secured it a little better because it's old and well used. It's about 9.40 p.m. and I am on my way home. I'm stuck in traffic once again on the Cross Bronx Expressway in the Bronx. And the reason why I'm heading home right now is because I checked the security camera footage and Simba threw up. Um, he ate dinner, then he threw up on the living room rug, on the cat's play rug. And so I decided I better go home and deal with that versus staying over at grandma and grandpa's house overnight. Uh, hopefully he's feeling okay. He's been laying on my bed. So after he vomited, he went back to the automatic feeders and he ate more food. So hopefully I'm not gonna come back to like double vomit in multiple areas. Hopefully it's just uh, where I saw it on the rug, but I'm not looking forward to having to uh, go home and clean this up. Hello, Boo. It's 10.20 p.m. I just got home. Boo greeted me at the door, and here's Stella. She's on the bed. And here's Simba. He's on the bed. Let's see what's going on with Boo's automatic feeder. Is it going to be full of ants? So I don't see any ants over here. Let's see what happens if I open it up. Looks good. There's no ants. And here's Splash. It's 7.30 a.m. Good morning, Simba. How you doing today? So the automatic feeders went off maybe like a half hour ago. And after I heard them go off, I thought it was strange that I didn't hear any cats running around the house to the feeders. So I walked over to Boo's room and Simba was eating out of Boo's automatic feeder. And I thought that was weird, but I didn't see Boo around. So I was like, okay, well, maybe Simba likes Boo's food better because Boo had some of the freeze-dried Stella and Chewy's. I think it's cod and salmon. I know it's definitely cod, but they were more fish-based food than what was downstairs. And I was like, okay, if Simba likes it, he can eat it. And Simba's under observation because... You know, he vomited yesterday twice, so I'm keeping him under observation to see um, what he does today. Last night, he had two uh, churus. Uh, after I got back, I just wanted to give him something light, not something heavy. And he also did eat more food out of the feeder after he vomited. So I figured, you know, he didn't have like an empty stomach totally. So um, he seems to be doing okay. And here's Boo. So when I was looking for Boo, I didn't find him anywhere. So I looked downstairs and I saw Stella and Splash and then Boo put his head around the corner and he was chewing on food. So it seems that Boo ate downstairs this morning, which is fine because Boo likes crunchies. Um, he doesn't really like the freeze dried bites that were in the downstairs feeders. Um, but if he had a breakfast of crunchies, that's fine. And here's Stella. Hello, Stella. And Stella also ate breakfast downstairs. So um, today it seemed like uh, everything went well as far as the cats eating their breakfast. I haven't been downstairs to see how much they've eaten. Actually, let's go check on the automatic feeders and let's see uh, how much breakfast was eaten. Here's Boo's feeder. We can see almost all the crunchies are gone and all of the freeze dried bites are gone. And this is what is going on downstairs. So we can see in the middle feeder, almost everything's gone except for three little crunchies. On the right, almost everything's gone except for some crunchies and two of the freeze-dried bites. Then on the left, there's still quite a bit of food there, freeze-dried bites and crunchies. So this worked well. The cats ate what they wanted and they left some. Now I only give them like a regular portion of food in these. I don't load them up uh, excessively. Uh, they get around 12 of the freeze-dried bites, and then they get about two tablespoons of the crunchies, which is dry cat food. And here's Splash. Hello, Splash. Good morning. Did you eat your food? It is about 12.15 p.m. 
and I'm performing a little bit of an experiment here. So I just washed all the bedding and put it back on the bed. And I have these squares of fabric. Each square is a different color. I actually have a few more colors than this, but this is what's fitting on the bed right now. So I have a blue square, a pink square, a green square, a yellow square, and a red square. And I'm curious to see if the cats have a favorite color or do they just like to lay on the bed in a certain area of the bed. For example, I noticed that the cats like to sleep in this corner of the bed. They also like to sleep in that corner of the bed. Stella likes to sleep here in the middle. Um, and I'm just wondering if by putting these color squares on, if that would change any of that. So Simba has decided he is gonna help out with this video right now. He jumped on the bed pretty much as soon as I put the camera on and he's laying on four different colors right now. He's on blue, yellow, red, and pink. It'll be interesting to see what I notice with these squares on the bed versus the little quilts and blankets that the cats had previously. Will the cats gravitate to one color more than the other colors? Or will they continue to lay in their favorite locations on the bed? As I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that I really probably could have ironed these squares. You see how you could still see the creases in them. Um, when I purchased them, they were folded into a smaller square. But I don't think the cats are going to mind. What I should also say is that I am a firm believer in layering bedding when it comes to cats. So I'll normally have like little quilts or blankets on top of the bed for the cats to lay on because I found that they like to lay on that. And then below that, I'll have this. This is a linen duvet cover. The reason this is on the bed is specifically for the cats. So if this gets dirty or if it gets full of cat hair, I could easily put this in the wash and not have to wash my entire comforter. So below that duvet cover, then I have the main comforter on the bed. And by putting a cat cover over the main comforter, uh, it definitely helps uh, me not have to throw the entire comforter in the laundry as much. So I just thought I would mention that. And since this is 100% linen, yeah, it gets very, very wrinkled. I kind of like the look of wrinkled linen. I love the texture of it. I love the fact that it's a natural fabric. Um, I just love the feel of linen. And I do have linen sheets on the bed. I love linen sheets. If you've never slept in linen sheets, definitely try it. It's a very big difference from cotton sheets. So Simba says he's gonna relax here. It's 1.43 p.m. I just walked in the room and Simba has chosen yellow. He's decided to lay on yellow. And Stella's enjoying an open window. Right, Stella? Big jump. Stella has chosen pink and green. And here's Boo. Boo is also enjoying an open window. It's a beautiful day today. And the sun is out and the sky is blue and the weather's starting to warm up. So it's really nice. It is 3.30 p.m. Let's check on the cats. So here's Simba. He's still on yellow. And look at Stella. Stella's laying on Simba. Stella's sleeping with Simba's butt. Hey, Stella, are you comfortable? She's sleeping with her nose up Simba's butt. Stella, what are you doing? Simba, maybe the reason why everyone likes to smell your butt is because it smells good. Maybe that's why Stella likes to bite your butt. Maybe you have a sweet smelling butt, Simba. Here's Boo. Hello, Boo. Boo's just getting some sun by the back door. I was going to show him to you, but he moved. It is such a beautiful day today. I just went for the first bike ride of the season. I only did 20 minutes because I haven't gone for a bike ride in so long, right, Boo? Here's Splash. He's laying on the sofa downstairs. It's nice and cool down here. Splash. 
So last summer, I had like no summer at all. I don't think I went to the beach once. I definitely did not get to exercise and enjoy the outdoors as much as I would have liked to. Um, there was so much cat drama last summer. So right around the middle of May was when Ditto injured his leg and I took him to the vet and then he uh, became an inside cat for a month. So from like the middle of May to the middle of June, I was nursing him in the recovery room. And then he went back outside. And after he went back outside, he got himself into a few more fights and he had another abscess. And then he also had like an eye infection. Um, so I felt like with him, it was just like, almost like one thing after another. And then at the very end of July, beginning of August was when Hydrox passed away. So then the entire month of August was spent training Ditto because my goal was to bring him inside. Also the entire month of September was spent training him. So he was trained for a good uh, two months outside and he wasn't trained as much as Boo was because he didn't stick around as much as Boo did. Like Boo moved on to the patio and he was on the patio for like every meal, pretty much every day. And Ditto did not do that. Ditto would go off and would not spend nearly as much time in my yard. So I was trying to encourage him to spend as much time as he wanted in my yard, which I think he did. I think he spent as much time as he wanted in my yard. I was trying to encourage him to spend as much time as I wanted him to in my yard because I knew my yard was safe. So if he spent 24 hours a day in my yard, I knew he was gonna be safe versus going off in the woods or down the block or anything like that, and getting himself into a situation which he eventually got himself into. So between dealing with all of the cat drama last year, I also had yard drama because a big branch from one of the trees that hang over my yard broke and it was resting on the roof of my house, which is not a good thing to have a really big, heavy uh, tree branch hanging on the roof of your house. So I then had to get a ton of estimates for uh, tree trimmers, which is difficult to do. They don't always get back to you when they do get back to you. I mean, the estimates were all over the place. Thankfully, I found a good company. So then last year I had to have all the trees trimmed back, which was like a major undertaking. Ditto got really freaked out that day. And, you know, he left the yard and then didn't show up for a while after that. And then we also had a really big storm. I, I don't remember if that was August or September, but we had that really big storm. Ditto sheltered that storm in the, uh, the old greenhouse, I turned it into like a giant cat shelter and he uh, he got through that storm in that greenhouse. So um, yeah, there's a lot of drama. And of course the weather was horrible. It was like every weekend was just horrible weather. We really didn't have any nice weekend weather. So last year was not a good summer for me at all. It was like I had no summer. I felt like I just worked all summer, had no time off, just dealt with cat stuff, dealt with yard stuff, dealt with work stuff, and it was just not fun. I am very much hoping that this summer is much better. That's why when I have a sunny day like today, I wanna to take advantage of it, even if it only means going for a 20 minute bike ride out in the beautiful weather, or sitting outside and reading a book for 20 minutes, or doing some work in the greenhouse or the yard. It's just so nice to be outside on beautiful days. About an hour or two ago, I tried to get the cats into a stroller and take them outside. Um, first, I tried Boo, could not do it. Then I tried Stella, could not do it. And then I tried Simba, again, could not do it. They fought me. I guess to them, it's like going into a carrier. They don't want to do that. And as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that I should probably put some pet remedy spray in the stroller. Then they might like it better. This is kind of obscene what's going on here. Simba, what are you doing? Stella, don't sleep like that. You're gonna sleep with your face in Simba's butt like that? She's licking his butt. Oh my gosh, Stella, she's licking his butt. 
Still, I don't like some of his butt. She must remember when he was a kitten. And she had to clean his butt when he was a kitten. Well, now she's licking his feet. Stella will always be Simba's mom. Even even though Simba's all grown up, Stella says, I'm still your mom. I could lick your butt if I want to. So anyway, none of the cats would let me put them in the uh, stroller to take them outside. I just wanted to take them out onto the patio so they could sit out there for a little while. They say they see no use in it because it's just like sitting by an open window. So two of the windows are wide open with the screens down and uh, the cats have been laying by the windows today. It is 6.10 p.m. and Splash and Simba are laying on the bed. The cats had dinner from their automatic feeders because they were set up yesterday. So I figured I might as well let them eat it. And here's Splash, he's not laying on any of the squares. He's kind of laying on yellow. And Simba's laying on pink. The majority of Simba's body is on pink. Even though he has a front leg on blue, two back legs on yellow, and a tail on red. But his majority is pink. And here's Boo. He's looking out the open window. I don't know what he sees, but he saw something that interested him very much. When you're looking at Boo, if I walk toward Boo, he's gonna move from where he is, he's gonna jump down. You proving me wrong? I said you were gonna jump down. I guess you're not. What do you see out there, Boo? You see something? I don't see any animals. I don't see any cats. I don't see any birds, no squirrels, nothing. I don't know what you've been looking at. It is 10, 10 p.m. And I'm just about to go to bed or at least relax. And this is what's going on on the bed. So Simba's laying on the blue square and Stella is laying on the green square. And this is something new for Stella. She usually doesn't lay like on that corner of the bed. So I'm wondering if she likes green. It is 6.55 a.m. Good morning, Stella. Stella slept on the green fabric all night and Simba slept on the blue fabric, but he got up this morning. I don't know where he went. And right now Stella's on the pink and the green. Good morning, Splash. How are you this morning? Splash was meowing a lot about a half hour ago or maybe an hour ago. I don't know what he was doing. I think he was playing with Simba. Good morning, Simba. Did you sleep well? Simba says he slept very well. He says he's still a little tired though. And here's Boo, he's in his office. He's already at work, bright and early, except he's facing the wrong direction. He's not looking out the window. He says he's still a little bit tired too. He could have slept longer. It's 11.22 a.m. and I thought we could check on the cats. So there's Simba, he's laying on the yellow fabric and there's Boo. Boo is laying on the green fabric. So far the cats have been laying on all the colors except for red. All the fabrics are made from the same exact material. So the only difference with the fabrics is the color. And there's Stella. Stella's in the penthouse today. I thought it would be Splash, but it's Stella. And here's Splash. He's laying downstairs on the ottoman. Sometimes he likes to be alone. 
It's 1.15 p.m. and Boo is still napping on this green fabric. And look at what's going on here. Splash is not too happy that Stella is in the penthouse because this is Splash's typical time of day to be in the penthouse, right Splash? He doesn't want to go in there while Stella's in there. Either that or Stella kicked him out. Maybe he tried to go in there and Stella was like, I don't need you in here. You stay out. I want it to myself. Is that what happened, Splashy? You growling at me? There's Stella. She's in the penthouse. And there's Splash. He's upset that Stella's in the penthouse. It's okay, Splash. You're okay. You're okay, Splash. You're okay. You're good. You're a big, brave boy. You're not afraid of a camera. You're not afraid of a camera, Splashy. Here's Simba. Simba is looking for a dried S-A-R-D-I-N-E. But he's not gonna get one. It's 3.45 p.m. I just walked into the room and saw this. Three cats on the bed. Looks like Stella's laying on the yellow fabric and Splash is on the pink fabric. Simba's kind of between yellow and red. I don't think he's really even on the red. I think he's just a little bit on the yellow. And here's Boo. He's by the open window in his room. I opened the window a little while ago because I knew he wanted to lay by it. So he's going to enjoy the afternoon. This has kind of become an afternoon routine because around 1 or 2 p.m. then uh, it starts to warm up nicely. And if it's sunny out, I open all the windows. I haven't had the heat on in the house in several days now. Even the nights have been kind of warmer. This morning I went outside for a little while and when I came back inside, I realized that it was cooler in the house than it was outside. And so that was very interesting. So since I got a new roof a few months ago, uh, the new roof is like a very dark color. It's like a charcoal color, almost like black. I have noticed that it does keep the house a bit warmer than the previous roof. The previous roof was a light gray, very light gray. And now with the darker charcoal color, um, it does keep the house warmer, which I love because I'm not a fan of cold or cold weather. Hello, Boo. It's about 9 a.m. And today was way day for the cats. Boo did not get weighed because he's been running away from me. These cats are so smart, right, Boo? And I finally got Stella, but let me tell you how smart Stella is and how it's so important to control your thoughts because every time that I had a thought about weighing Stella, like in my mind saying, okay, I'm going to pick Stella up and weigh her, she ran away from me. But if I change my thoughts to food, and saying, okay, Stella, let's have breakfast. I'm going to give you food. She came towards me. It was uncanny. So she ran down here when I thought about weighing her. So then I came down here and she ran away from me. So then I said, okay, Stella, you want to eat some food? And I started, you know, doing what I normally do to put their breakfast together. And she came toward me. She even rubbed up against my legs. And then the minute I changed my thoughts to picking her up to weigh her, she ran away from me. Like it was that instant. So what I had to do was I had to keep my thoughts on food, literally start putting their breakfast together. She came up to me again, rubbed up against my legs. And without changing my thoughts from food, I immediately scooped her up and was able to take her upstairs and weigh her. Now, Simba was no problem. I just picked him up off the cat tower he was on, weighed him, gave him some dried sardines, and he was good. Stella had some treats also. She had a few freeze-dried nuggets, and uh, everyone's happy now. 
and both her and Simba weigh exactly the same as they did last week, which was exactly the same as they did the week before. And each week I've been making a few tweaks to their diets, trying to bring their weight down maybe 0.2 pounds a week, but um, everything has been just really stable for them, which I'm not complaining about. I think it's good that they're stable. Um, but like I mentioned in a previous video, they do weigh a few more pounds than Boo, and I would like them to get down to Boo's weight. So they don't have far to go. And one thing that we don't do on this channel for all the new viewers is we don't body shame cats. We don't mention certain words that would make them feel bad about themselves. All right, Stella? Because we know you and Simba are very fluffy, right? You and Simba are very fluffy cats. You have very dense fur, right? And that makes you different from Boo. Boo is, Boo is more sleek. His fur is not as dense and it's not as thick. And here's Simba. Simba says he doesn't know what the big deal is, why everyone gets so stressed out. People just need to chill out and stay calm. Right, Simba? The cats have some packing paper that they've been playing with. Simba likes to scratch on it and chew it. Simba says he's soft and fluffy. Hey, Stella. Stella and I have been playing while Boo's eating. Meanwhile, here's Boo. Boo, did you finish your food? You're done with it? You want to finish that? Boo says he wants some more crunchies on it. See if I put a few pieces of dry cat food on it. Then he goes back to eat it. It's 2 p.m. There are three cats on the bed. There's Stella, Boo, and Splash. And Splash is on the bed because Simba's in the penthouse. Simba's been in the penthouse all morning. And it's weird to see Boo in the middle of the bed. And what's even weirder is look at Boo's butt. Stella has her foot on Boo's butt. This is like a first. Usually they don't sleep together like that, like they're touching each other. I'm not going to disturb them. I think Boo feels a little self-conscious because he's in the middle and Stella has her foot on him. If I try to pet Boo right now, Splash is probably going to freak out and jump off the bed. So Boo is partially on the red and Splash is on the green and the pink. So far I'm thinking that it's more about location on the bed than color of the fabric. Because Stella 
loves to lay in this area of the bed. And Boo is normally in this corner, but because Splash is there, that's why he's over here. And poor Splash. He doesn't know what to do with himself when he doesn't have the penthouse. It's funny, I think it's kind of like on a first come, first serve basis. Like whoever gets there, gets it. And Simba got there before Splash did today. So Boo likes it that Stella is sleeping with her foot on him. He would be really happy if she cuddled up to him. But if it was the other way around and Boo was touching Stella, she'd probably get annoyed and smack him. Or if Boo tried to cuddle with Stella, yeah, she'd probably beat him up. It's 2.37 p.m. and look at what's going on here. There are now four cats on the bed. And look at what's going on here with Stella and Boo. Look at this. They're touching each other even more than before. It's 3.21 p.m. I just got back from a bike ride and look what's going on here. Three cats are still on the bed. Splash moved over to the pink fabric. Stella is still kind of where she was, and so is Boo. And they're still sleeping right next to each other, butt to butt. Actually, it looks like Boo's hind leg might be underneath Stella. Maybe they've reconciled. It's only taken about six years for them to do that. And where did the past six years go? My gosh, has it been that long since the two of them were living outside together? And here's Splash. Hey, Splashy. It's 6 p.m. I just finished cleaning out the garage and I came inside and saw this. Four cats hanging out on the bed. Simba's on green. Splash is on pink. Boo's kind of on red. And Stella was in her favorite spot. What are you guys up to? This is like the cat hangout during the day. This is their absolute favorite place to be during the day. It's 7.15 p.m. and I have one word and that is wow. So I'm putting dinner together for the cats. They're having some homemade raw food. And then this is Boo's here, this messy one, because he gets some canned food mixed in. And I was just about to open up a bag of crunchies and sprinkle a few crunchies on top of their food. When I turned around and here was Simba and here was Boo and Simba gave Boo a headbutt and Boo did not hit Simba. He didn't try to attack him. It was amazing. It was a first. I've never seen this happen before. Good job, Simba. Good job. Good job, Boo. You did so good. What a good boy you are, Boo. You're a good man, Boo. You're a good man. You got a headbutt from Simba? That means Simba likes you, Boo. That means Simba likes you. See, he could give you a headbutt and you don't have to smack him. You don't have to punch him. It's so nice that Boo did not punch Simba in the face because usually that's what he does. If someone tries to uh, be nice to him, Boo punches him. So last night when I was giving the cat some crunchies as a treat, something happened between Splash and Boo and Boo punched him, you know, swatted at him, smacked him, and you could hear it. It sounded like a punch. Like when you watch a movie and someone gets punched, that's exactly how it sounded. 
it's horrible that Boo smacked Splash, but at the same time, it was really funny because if you would have heard it, it sounded just like a human punch. It's 7.30 p.m. Boo has decided he wants to eat his dinner up here. And look what's going on. There are three cats waiting for Boo to walk away from his plate. The minute he walks away from his plate, one, two, or three of them will descend upon it. Stella might be making her move now. She put herself in position. She's closer to the plate. Three cats trying to steal Boo's food. Now they ate already. They had the same amount of food that Boo has. Boo just eats slower and he likes to eat up here sometimes. It's 10 a.m. And look at this. Simba and Stella are already laying on the bed. It looks like Simba has chosen pink to lay on. It reminds me of like if you've ever gone on a vacation to a hotel with a really nice pool and you know people try to get the best seats at the pool so you try to get to the pool early to stake out your seats and reserve seats. This is what this bed is starting to remind me of. It's like okay who's gonna get here early to get their favorite spot and then you know they can't be disturbed. So Stella and Simba have staked out their spots for the day. And here's Splash. I'm surprised he's not in the penthouse already. So Splash has a routine where if I'm sitting at my desk, which is basically the dining room table, and working on my computer about this time in the morning, he'll come up to me, he'll just start meowing. I'm like, what do you want, Splash? And I'll give him some pets and then walk away. Then he'll come back and he'll just start meowing. I'm like, what do you want, Splash? I'll give him some pets. He walks away and it repeats a few times and then I'll get up and I'll follow him. I'll be like, what do you want, Splash? And then he'll run away from me. And here's Boo. Boo's in his office. Boo says he's working today. Yesterday he laid on the bed with the cats all day. And today he's working, right, Boo? You're trying to touch me? You want to touch me? More pets? Okay. So Boo slept on this cat tower last night, I'm assuming. I have no idea where he slept, actually. It's 12.45 p.m. and Boo is laying by the back door. He's laying in the sun. And here's Stella and Simba. They have not moved off of the bed today since breakfast. Stella's in her favorite spot, and Simba has chosen yellow. And there's Splash. Splash is in the penthouse. He's way in the back. That was smooth, Boo. You just fell off the day sofa, and you made it look like you wanted to do that. It's about 3.15 right now. I just came to see what the cats are up to, taking a break from my work. And what's going on here? Today, Simba's laying with Stella. Simba's looking very comfortable. It's 4.15 p.m. Look at what's going on here. Stella and Simba are laying back to back on the bed. They're so funny. It's a beautiful day today. I just got back from a bike ride. I've been taking like these afternoon breaks to get some exercise and it's been amazing, especially this week because the weather has been so nice. It's beautiful, it's sunny, it's like 75 degrees out, not humid. 
and it's been that way for the past few days. Now, tomorrow, and then like the next three days after that, are supposed to be rainy. It is mail time. The cats got some mail. Let's see what they got. The cats got an envelope. Let's open this up and see what they got. Isn't that a cute cat? It says two lucky feral Stella Boo Splash Simba Hydrox Ditto missing you from Eileen. Thank you very much, Eileen, for this very pretty card, and we hope you are doing well. We miss Hydrox and Ditto also. And here's something from Amazon. It is a $25 PetSmart gift card. Thank you very much. I don't know who sent this to the cats. There was no note included. So whoever you are, thank you very much. This will be used for cat supplies. And here's a box. This is from Amazon also. Ooh, what's this? It's cat food. This is Instinct. And this is their real chicken recipe. I believe this is their chicken pate. Thank you very much for this. This is some of the food that the cats enjoy. They've been getting canned food about once a week. Also, whenever I forget to defrost raw food for them, they get canned food. So uh, this will definitely be put to good use. Oh, and look at this. We have a bag of the Instinct Raw Boost Mixers. This is what I put in the cat's automatic feeders if I need to take an overnight trip or if I'm away for a day or two. Thank you very much. I'm currently down to about half a bag of these, so uh, this is great. And here's another bag, so this should definitely last the cats a month or two. And look at this, a big tub of squeeze-ups. 12 with chicken, 12 with tuna, 12 with tuna and shrimp, and 12 with chicken and veggies. Thank you very much. We've been going through one of these tubs about once a month. The cats have been getting these as a treat. Uh, they've also been getting these as a food topper sometimes. And also if they have an upset stomach, then I give it to them uh, at that time also. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, I don't know who sent these to the cats. There's not a note included, but thank you very much for thinking of them and for your generosity. And here we have a big package, and this is from Sharon. Look at this. Look at this, the cat's got some new quilts. Isn't this beautiful? Look at the colors on this. This is gorgeous. And look at this side with all the animals. There's a row of cats, a row of bears and dogs, and a row of cats and dogs. That is so cute, and it says furry friends. That's such nice fabric. Oh, and look at this one. This is so nice and summery. Stella's gonna love this. Well, Boo and Simba love these too. And here's the back. That's a really nice summery fabric also. These are so thick and comfy. I wish you could feel how thick and comfy these are. This says, hi, LF's mom. First, I want to say what a wonderful cat mom you are and were to your gang and to Hydrox and Ditto. I felt really bad about Hydrox's and Ditto's passings, but I know they could not have been taken care of better and I learned a lot from your videos. You are so kind. Thank you very much. 
I had a scare several months ago. Sunday, my 17-year-old kitty was not eating much, so I brought her to the vets, and it turned out she had a cancerous mass in her abdomen. Fortunately, my vet was able to remove it, and I am hoping for the best. So far, she had a four-month checkup, and all was good. I lost her sister, Pumpkin, to cancer a few years ago. I'm very sorry to hear about Sunday, but I'm happy to hear that she's doing good, and I'm very sorry to hear about Pumpkin. Just sending some of my crazy things, but I think I may have to explain what a couple of them are. The flat pieces with Velcro along one side are seat belt covers, and the small ring-like pieces are to wrap around cords or anything, actually. I hope you like and can use them. Enjoy your summer. Hi to Grandma and Grandpa Farrell. Hugs and purrs, Sharon and Sunday. Well, thank you very much, Sharon and Sunday, for all of these goodies and for this nice letter. And here's a picture of Sunday. She's 17 years old. Isn't she pretty? She looks a bit like Splash, doesn't she? I think Splash has another girlfriend. So it looks like there are some bags here. Look at this bag with the cats on it. I'm not sure if this bag has a specific purpose. It is a very unique shape. Sharon, if you're watching this, please let me know if uh, this has uh, a specific purpose. It's really pretty. And here's another one. And look at this, there's more bags. So this month, the state of New Jersey enacted some new laws with regards to bags that you get at the supermarket and certain stores when you shop. They've completely outlawed plastic bags and they've also outlawed paper bags in stores that are of a certain size that sell groceries. So all the supermarkets got together and they said, yeah, we're going to ban plastic bags, but we're also going to ban paper bags. You can't even buy a paper bag for five cents like you can in the state of New York, for example. You're going to have to bring your own bags. And if you don't bring your own bags, you're going to have to spend a dollar or more for a reusable bag. So I've been using a lot of the bags that Sharon has sent to me previously, and I see more bags here now. So this is great. I have to make sure I have bags bags in my car at all times because I never know when I'm going to be popping into a store or shopping if I'm out and about. So uh, thank you so much. Look at this bag. This is a really unique shape. I love the fabrics that Sharon puts inside the bags also. I mean, there is such amazing attention to detail. And here's another one. That's really cute. Look at the fabrics. They're perfectly coordinating. And the inside perfectly coordinates also. That is so cute. Look at this cute little bag. This is perfect for a little gift bag or to carry snacks. You know, put some snacks in here. That's awesome. Here's another zippered pouch. Look at those cats. They're wearing hats. I don't know where she finds this fabric. It's incredible. And look at these cats. Aren't they cute? That reminds me of Stella. Little kitty cats. And this is another zippered bag. So here's the fabric with the Velcro and these are seat belt covers. So I guess you wrap it around the seat belt. Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. I'll put that in my car. And here's another one. Isn't that adorable? Look at this little bag. I love this fabric. That is so cute. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's a cat shaped bag and it has like this little key ring on it. And look, it sprinkles. That is so cute. Thank you very much, Sharon, for all of these goodies. You are so talented. And here's another one. Check out that fabric. It's so cute. I love how the zippers always perfectly match the fabrics. And here's another little bag like a little change purse, or I use these for like earbuds or charging wires. These are great. And these are the small ring-like pieces that can wrap around cords or anything. That's really nice. And here's another one with the strawberries and the fruit. I love that fabric. 
And here we have a gorgeous tote bag. It's like a quilted tote bag. Look at the cats in their hats. Isn't that adorable? And it's reversible. Check out the other side. Isn't that cute? With all the cats. And here's another one of the little cord wrappers. Check out this bag with all of the black cats on it. And there's some tuxedo cats on it too. This is so cute. I've never seen so many adorable cat fabrics. I have no idea where she finds them. Thank you so much, Sharon, for all of these amazing goodies. I will be sharing some of them with Grandma Farrell and also some friends and family members. So thank you so much for thinking of me. And the cats, thank you for the quilts. And we send all of our best wishes and positive thoughts and energies to Sunday. We hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.